Thank you for tuning in to Mount Calvary Holy Church Family Worship Center with Bishop Alvin Mickens. Please enjoy this series of... of God. He goes further to say, amen, in 2 Corinthians 9 and 8, he said, besides, God is able to make every blessing of your overflow up for you so that in every situation, you will always have all you need for any good work. Good God Almighty. He said, it doesn't matter, amen, what you go through, God is able to make every blessing of your overflow for you. He says so that in every situation you will always have what you need amen for whatever you're doing for the Lord and I thank God that even though we had to go through what we went through God met every need and somebody needs to be encouraged whatever this thing that you're going through I want to encourage you God going to meet every need. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Hey, listen, listen. How can you be going through a drought but God turn around and give you a brand new job? How can you go through what you go through and God turn around and keep on blessing you? He said, don't worry about it. Paul said, don't worry about it. He said, because, what? because beside this, God is able to make every blessing of your overflow for you so that in every situation good God, he says in every situation you will always have all that you need somebody ought to lift your hands if you are a witness in the sanctuary or you're a witness in your home you ought to wave your hand and say in every circumstance God has met my need. Glory to God. Let me move on down here quickly. I got to get on out of here. Amen. So, so, so look around and tell somebody again, it, uh, this is making you better. Number two, number two, number two, quickly. Number two, affliction in warfare is necessary for my better. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Paul didn't, uh, amen, amen. David didn't understand it. That, that he, he didn't understand the fact that in affliction, in, in affliction in warfare is necessary for his better. Can I get a witness? Uh, how, how do you say that, Bishop? Why do you say that? Because, because you know, in, in transformation and in transition, uh, it has a tendency of automatically placing you in a war zone. In a war zone in life. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it'll place you in a war zone in life. And see, uh, you, you can't get around it. Warfare isn't fair. <laughs> Warfare doesn't play fair. Glory to God. Warfare is not your friend. <laughs> <laughs> Glory to God. It, 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 it always try to bring an end to something. That's why you got to understand that warfare, it deals with two types of enemies. It deals with a visible enemy and it deals with an invisible enemy. Sometimes the devil will allow, sometimes God will allow you to see the devil. And then sometimes you can't see the devil. And he'll come, amen, when you least expect it. Amen. In David's day, he, he had to, he had, he was able to see the enemy. Glory to God. Because see, anytime you deal with warfare, warfare puts you in, in certain places. And David was in a place called Gath. Gath meant a, a wine press. Uh, Gath, Gath meant to press down. And, and so while he was there, he had to meet he had to meet Goliath. Glory to God. Can I get a witness? Amen. And while he had to meet Goliath, he had to understand, amen, that in his warfare, there was a warfare going on, and God challenged him. He challenged the people of God, but everybody didn't stand up. Everybody didn't stand up, but David stood up. Yes, he stood up because he understood that he was in the war zone. Glory to God. He was in the wine press because see, he 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 had to go against he had to go against Goliath. Cause see, a lot of people spend a lot of times in in church. We talk about a man uh, uh, David and Goliath, and we just leave it there. But but let me tell you, Goliath had three other brothers. Glory to God that David had to deal with. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So what I'm saying is once you get past one giant, you got some other giants you got to deal with. You got some kinfolk. Uh, the devil got some kinfolk, glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. So, so David had to deal with Goliath, you know. And, and Goliath's name meant to uncover. It meant to reveal. It meant to attack 
weak areas. Uh, kind of like with this thing, I found out that that's what COVID does. Amen. It attacks weak areas. Amen. It, it, that, that, that's how it gets in your body. It, it finds a weak area and then it gets in your body and it attacks your body. And that's how the devil will do. He'll look at your life and see how you're living. He'll try to get and find a weak spot so he can get in there. Once he get in there, then he can get to working on you. Amen. So David had to deal with this thing that looks so big but what it was trying to do was find a weak spot it started talking junk the enemy start talking junk you ain't gonna do this you ain't gonna be this you ain't gonna conquer this you gonna stay here you ain't gonna do this you ain't gonna do that but God a man rose up in David and said whatever the devil said that I can't do I'm gonna be able to do so he said who is this uncircumcised Philistine that come to defile the very armies of God and he said listen amen when, when the devil looked at him through Goliath he started la laughing he said this little scrawny little fella what you got he said he ain't got no little slingshot but let me tell you if you got a little slingshot full of faith you can whip the devil every time somebody look at somebody and say if you got a little slingshot full of faith you can whip the devil every any time. Oh yeah, any time you take that little bit of faith and just wind it on up and say, I may not feel good, but I'm going to be all right. I may not feel good, but I'm going to be healed. I may not feel good, but I'm still going to come out of this better. Somebody ought to just shake your little bit of faith and wave it around and say things are going to get better. Amen. This thing, amen, is coming to make me better. So so then he had to deal he had to deal with good life. And then he had to deal with another brother right out after that because once the enemy gets they come at you he's coming again and this other brother named Lam Lamy and Lamy amen was one that came after your food he came after your resources glory to God and the enemy will come after your resources he will try to make you think you ain't gonna have enough to make it but let me help somebody that if God got to take the government and make God and make make them bless you glory to God and how, how many know that that's what's happening right now oh yeah there's some stuff coming that's gonna bless us if he have to go through the White House to bless you he'll go through the White House glory to God because the enemy tried to eat your stuff up but God said I'm gonna supply every need. Somebody ought to lift your hands and say thank you. My blessings on the way. Raises are on the way. Promotions on the way. Opportunities on the way. Favors on the way. You ought to give God praise right now. You might be suffering a little while but after a while God gonna turn this thing around. I'm trying not to preach this but I gotta say this to somebody. Just hold on a little bit longer. I remember one of our mothers preached a long time ago and they, amen that help is on the way you ought to point across the room to somebody and tell them help is on the way help is on the way and in your home you ought to say help is on the way Glory to God. Glory to God. And then there was another brother. Amen. His name was Sap, which means sweep away. It means, it means to violently, amen, and legally enter into one's body and space. Amen. That's what the enemy wants to do. He wants to, amen, sweep away stuff. And he wants to violate and illegally enter into your realm, into your space, to leave you damage and less functional but I got news for the devil glory to God he tried to leave us a man damaged and less functional but I got news for the enemy hallelujah I'm getting ready to rise to another place amen co is getting ready to rise to another place and whoever going through what you're going through you getting ready to rise to another place and then the last enemy the last brother amen according to the scriptures he had no name he was unnamed and I said God what are you saying here he's saying let them know that sometime the devil won't identify himself in his assault uh, glory to God he said it just like this virus once we get past one then there comes another variance now they're talking about another variance uh, coming from another place uh, and we can't identify but in the midst of all these brothers uh, David and his leadership that's why I thank God for our leadership that's why I thank God for every minister that's why I thank God for every membership that's why I thank God for Mount Calvary Holy Church of America because in the midst 
of us going through what we went through. Every leader, just like David, they joined with David and they beat every brother that Goliath had. Look at somebody and say, every giant is coming down. Glory to God, glory to God. Every giant is coming down. Number three, I'm, I'm finishing out, and that is, amen. But in the end, glory to God, tell somebody, we still win. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's why this thing is going to make you better because David got to the point where he realized why God wanted to do what he did and why God gave him the victory. The first thing David said, again, he said, you enlarge my steps under me and my feet uh, have not slipped. He said, I, I, I didn't miss a step. Glory to God. While I went through with every enemy that that the, that the devil said, he said, I didn't slip, glory to God. He said, my feet was like a deer that climbed the mountains. You see, amen, David compared his victory like a deer that climbed the mountains. If you look at history about deers in the mountain, they jump from rock to rock. They jump from place to place, but, but record has it that never, not one ever slipped and fell down the mountain because they were sure-footed about going up the mountain. I feel like preaching a few minutes. They were sure-footed about going up the mountain and and God said, why are you going through what you're going through? Just like David, he said, your feet won't slip. You won't meet a beat in your, you won't miss a beat in your faith. Uh, glory to God. Just as sure as the dear feet that climbs the mountain, your faith is going to bring you out of this. Uh, look at somebody say, it's going to bring me out of this. And David said, well, God, why, why, how did you bring me out of this? Why did you bring me out of this? And then when you go hey, back to 2 Samuel 22 and 20 the bible says that david said god brought me forth also into a large place and he delivered me listen to this because he delighted in me Lord, I feel that running out of this sanctuary. He said, I got it, God. He said, the reason why, hey man, I'm still going to win is not because of my talents, not because of my education, not because of my degrees. He said, because you delight in me. Glory to God. Tell somebody, say, my God delights in me. Oh, yes. He, you see, David's plea to God was rooted in his relationship, not necessarily in his work that he did in his kingdom for God. It ain't about your work that you do in the church. It ain't about the work that you do or the position you have all the time. It's about your relationship with God. God. Hey man, his plea to God wasn't based on I did this in the church and I did that in the church, but his plea was rooted in his relationship with God. And God responded back to him and said, David, the reason why I'm bringing you out, the reason why you're going to always win is because I take the light in you. Look at somebody and say, he delight in you. Glory to God. The word delight means to be pleased greatly. The word delight means to have joy and satisfaction in. God said, I got satisfaction in you. Come here, Job. Tell me about it. When Satan came against Job, amen, God said, God said, what do you want? He said, well, amen, I just want to turn his faith from you. If you just let me go down and move the hedge, and, and, and God I said, let me tell you something. I take great delight in Job. He said, he said I'm going to let you go down, but I'm not going to let you touch his soul. Go to God. He said, because that's where I live. That's where I delight. I delight in my relationship with Job. So the Bible said that when the enemy was released, Job lost everything he had. But in the end, Job had to realize it wasn't about him. His test wasn't about him, but it was about his friends. Oh, my God. Look at somebody say, it ain't about you. This thing you're going through. It ain't about you. It's going to make you better. But it's about your friends. It's about your relatives. It's about the people you come in contact with. And they're going to understand that even though you got to go through what you got to go through, even though you got to face what you got to face, but in the end, you still win. So I'm going to lift my hand to God. And I'm going to say, God, I thank you. But in the end, I'm 
going to win. I need you to tell, look, point across the room in your social distancing and, and say to somebody, but in the end, uh, we're still going to win. Somebody ought to give God praise. Why are you in your home? You ought to lift your hands and look at what God done in your home. Look how God covered your house. Look how God took care of your children. Look how God made ways out of no way. And you ought to tell the devil. But in the end, we still win. Somebody ought to preach this with me. Tell somebody, say, in the end, we still win. Come on and give him praise. Oh, y'all can do better than that. You know how? You know why I can say we, we still win? Because I'm standing here today. Amen. For about three weeks, I was laying in the bed, amen, looking at y'all. Glory to God. Wishing I was there. Glory to God. But look at what God did. Amen. Some, I'm not bragging. Listen, I'm just giving a testimony that God is able to do exceedingly above, above all we can ask or think. So somebody ought to give God praise. And if God has blessed me and co-pastor, the all runs down. The victory one runs down. If God has given us the victory, then every member connected to us is getting ready to experience victory. If God has given us back good health, every member is getting ready to experience good health. If God is opening doors and yet blessing us in this time of pandemic, God going to bless every member, every friend, every fellowship church, amen, that's connected to us because God wants us to know that he takes delight. Okay. So tell somebody, say, this is making me better. Give God praise. Father, I give you glory. I give you honor. I give you praise. I thank you for this opportunity and the strength to be able to share, to teach, and to preach your word again. And I thank you for the many thousands that are listening to us by way of social media. We pray that you have blessed them. And for those that are sitting in standing in the sanctuary, I pray that you have blessed them. And our membership, I pray that you continue to bless them. We have been encouraged. We have been uplifted. And God, we see a better day coming. And we give you glory. We give you honor. And we give you praise. Because we know in the end, we still win. Why? Because you are making us better. Come on and give God praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Father, while there may be someone that's, uh, that's listening by way of social media and they don't know you as their Savior, we pray now that you would touch their heart, convict their spirit, and draw them with loving kindness. Right now, if you're listening to my voice and you desire to know God for yourself, doesn't matter what you've done, doesn't matter what you've been through, doesn't matter how hard life has been to you, God still loves you. Just say this prayer with me, Lord Jesus, I realize I've fallen short of your glory and I've sinned against you, but I believe, amen, with my heart and I confess with my mouth that you sent Jesus to be my savior. I believe that Jesus is able to save my soul. Right now, Jesus, will you come into my life as my Lord and savior? Cleanse me and wash me from all unrighteousness. Right now, I confess with my mouth and I believe with my heart 
hallelujah, beyond the shadow of a doubt uh, that I am saved. Now fill me with your Holy Spirit. Engulf me with your power and give me the strength and guide me to join a church that will feed my soul in Jesus' name. And everybody say, praise him. Glory to God. Come on and give God praise. We believe somewhere, somehow, somebody has joined in the kingdom. Amen. And heaven is rejoicing. And if there's some, also someone that has been listening and following us, amen, every Sunday, listen to every message, and you don't have a church, and you desire to become a member of this church, amen, please just kind of put in the notes, amen, on Facebook that you desire to be a member of this church and uh, give us your contacts and we will make contact with you and glad you, gladly in, in, embrace you to be a part of this great church, the Mount Calvary Holy Church Family Worship Center right here in Concord, North Carolina. You don't have to be in this location to be a part of this great ministry. Come on and give God praise. Glory to God. Amen. And if this has blessed you, amen, whenever God blesses us, we give. We give by way of, of tithe and offering. And we believe God, amen. We believe in the principles of tithe and offering, amen. We believe what the scripture says, that we bring in the storehouse tithes and offering, that God will open up the windows of heaven and pour us out a blessing we won't have room to receive. So therefore, amen, we believe that God is able to open up doors. God is able to make ways out of no ways. God is going to give us jobs and better jobs and raises and benefits. God is going to cause us to have progressive careers. God is going to give us, amen, favorable things, favorable commissions, and all these great things. God's going to bring us out of debt. God is also, amen, going to decrease, uh, decrease our expenses and give us overwhelming blessings because we are givers and we are tithers. So right now, amen, we believe God. Hallelujah. If you give, if you bless God's church, he will bless your house. And we're grateful for those that have been giving on a consistent basis and blessing this ministry. We love you with the love of the Lord. Father, right now, for every giver, every tither that give and, and souls into this ministry, we pray what your word says, that the heavens will open up and you will pull them out of blessing that they won't have room to receive. And you will rebuke the hands of the devourer. In Jesus, in Jesus' name, we pray and we thank God today. Amen. You can give by way of Givelify. Amen. You can give by way of Cash App, and it is presented right there on the screen. Thank you again for listening and being a blessing to this ministry. It is a privilege to be a blessing to you. God bless you today. Amen. Coach, Co Pastor, and I love you with the love of the Lord, and we pray that you continue to have a great week as we look toward our season of resurrection and we give God praise. And don't forget, amen, to wear your mask and to walk in social distance. God bless you. Grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Have a great day. We love you. Praise the Lord. I pray that you enjoyed this wonderful teaching by our Bishop Elvin Mickens. Please join us next week.